Hello there, it's Jeff Barton. Here we are in uh, rain sodden London. It's uh, Friday the 17th of March. Uh, by the way, that's not Molly B. For those people who know Molly B, she has put a bit of weight on, but she's not looking quite like that uh, yet. Um, have a look at the email version, have a look at our Twitter feed, you'll see a statement which we and other trade unions have all put, put out with the Department for Education around talks, and it helps to explain to you why you're going to get some respite over coming days and possibly weeks of me talking about talks. The full statement is there in our email today. So let's talk about other stuff. Relationships and sex education, you'll remember, was uh, an issue this time last week which was brewing uh, pretty vociferously and often nastily in the media. Disproportionately, it was suggesting that schools really aren't doing relationships and sex education properly. We think that is not true, but we also think there are probably things we could do to do it better. For example, the training of teachers. You know, if you're a newly qualified maths teacher being expected to do some elements of sex education with your tutor group, what kind of quality of training might you have had, particularly in these very fraught times when you're navigating so many challenging issues on that topic? What can we do more of? I've tried to set those out in a blog today, and behind the scenes we're trying to set out with the Department for Education that probably there are more things as part of the review of relationships and sex education that could happen as a result, and all of it is designed to take some of the heat out of the whole debate. Similarly, if you haven't heard, to, heard it yet, we did a... Um, podcast last week where uh, uh, what I did behind the scenes was to talk to each of the speakers at our conference. The first of those speakers, Amanda Spielman, Chief Inspector, she talks about this issue of relationships and sex education and brings a sense of kind of calm, uh, dispassionate rationality to it, which I think is very constructive. Have a listen to that. And if you haven't listened to the whole pod podcast, which lasts about 30 minutes, I think you've got um, Baroness Sue Campbell talking about the extraordinary work of the lionesses and uh, their manager, for example. You've got Jay Blades talking about dyslexia. Uh, you've got Benjamin Zephaniah. You've got a whole range of really interesting speakers there. It might just be something you want to listen to on the way home from work or um, to escape the family over the weekend. And then we've got Hotline, and Rachel Burtonshaw, our hot sh Hotline leader, uh, has given me a summary of the kind of issues. I've put those into the email just to give you a sense of the kind of things you are contacting us about. There's a lot of disciplinary and capability, there's a lot of restructures going on, a lot of concerns about mental health, lots of questions about pensions. All of that gives us a snapshot of where the profession might be at the moment. And finally, as you know, what we try and do at the end of the week is finish with a frontline funny. And we got one from James, a head teacher. I'm doing this from memory, so the actual text is in the email. But he said um, that they had a careers fair uh, the night before. And a parent went up to the deputy head and said, all I want is for my daughter to follow her dreams. Great, says the deputy head. So long as it's in uh, actuarial management and, uh, and risk assessment fairly specific. Okay, um, that's it from me in London. You look after yourself and hope you get some time off this weekend. We will be back with you next Tuesday one way or another, but uh, as ever, if you need us, you know where we are.